Alrighty, welcome back to today's episode. Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing? What's going on, Bank Banger family? Today's episode, again, we're doing a tabletop uh, review, discussion, tabletop kind of uh, video here for you guys. We haven't done one in a while. Uh, I've been trying to keep it as uh, almost as a series um, as fishing has progressed here, guys. Um, we did one, I think, for the winter to spring transition. We did spring to summer. We did summer baits. Um, now what we're going to do and cover in today's episode is summer to fall baits review. Some of my favorites, some of my recommendations, some of the things I'm throwing that I've had success with. want to share it with you guys and just give you guys my impressions on why I throw certain things or why I have certain luck with certain baits during this time of the year. So let's jump into today's episode. Alrighty guys, so today's episode, like I said, we are doing a tabletop on baits that I throw during this time of the year. We're talking about that summer to fall transition, guys. Uh, the last few days here in uh, Northern Illinois have been on the cooler side. A lot, 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 lot less humid, cooler temperatures in the morning. I think, you know, we're in the 60s, upper 60s in the morning, and we're getting to, you know, 70s, lower 80s with no humidity, um, nice sunny skies, you know, it's really, really comfortable to get out. Uh, so that time of the year is coming and it's fast approaching. It could be already that time of the year where you guys are at. It could be a long ways off depending on where you're at, but it's still applicable for everybody to kind of see this information, just get the ideas out there or see what's working for myself here and then apply it either uh, next year if you're already past this time or you know too much into this time of the year or apply it this year still uh, when you're going to get to this time of the year. Uh, for me, one of my go-to uh, baits that I throw during this time of the year or I favor is similar to uh, pre-spawn or the spawn time of the year. I am throwing some type of jig. So um, here on the table, guys, we got two types of jigs. Some type of flipping or pitching jig, um, whether, you know, it's a heavy cover type jig, you know, a stand-up kind of, you know, flipping style jig. And then uh, some type of a swim jig. So my swim jigs, again, uh, this is just uh, an example of one. Uh, this is a Guggen Bates uh, Grass Hero. It's a, uh, I think it's a, it's a quarter ounce um, swim jig. It's a nice color. It's a bright color. Um, I think it's called Rotten Pumpkin or something like that. I love this swim jig in the bluegill pattern. Absolutely crushed them. There's a couple of videos on it, guys. Clear water uh, lake that we crushed them on. We crushed them on a little river pocket on this exact swim jig, just in a different color. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's got the double hook keeper or, or double bait keeper, I should say. During the fall time, guys, you got to be thinking again, what are the fish doing? Uh, so the fish are preparing for winter time. They're going to be probably, um, I would say, almost as aggressive as they can be throughout the entire year during this time because they're aggressively feeding on bait fish on different types of bait within your bodies of water they are trying to fatten up for winter time and they are just going to go and clobber anything that they think they are going to be able to eat or they want to eat or is a meal for them a swim jig is a good choice for that guys you put some type of trailer on the back i've been favoring a, a paddle tail swim bait as you guys have seen i've even put a craw on the back here uh, I've even put a, uh, a bandito bug, you know, a, a creature type style flipping bait on the back, just depending on the action I'm looking for and what do I want? You know, do I want an aggressive kick from, you know, like a cracking craw or a paddle tail, or do I want something a little bit more subtle, um, like a bandito bug, right? So it all depends on how aggressive the fish really are, but a swim jig is a great, great tool this time of the year. Staying on the same topic, guys. A regular flip and pitch and jig, great. I mean, you can't say enough about having a jig tied on almost all, really all year round. Um, but again, these fish are feeding heavily, heavily on bait. 
So a jig is another great option, guys. Uh, you flip it into some heavy stuff. You flip it undercover, two structure, um, anything. I mean, the jig is a versatile, versatile bait, and I absolutely love a jig fish. I love catching them on a jig. This year, I really didn't use a jig as much as I wanted to because I was trying to branch out and really use other things that uh, I normally don't throw. Some of that stuff is on the table here, guys. Um, stuff I normally don't throw, stuff out of my comfort level, just to get some uh, comfort in throwing different baits, being a more well-rounded angler, really, to be honest with you guys, um, and getting comfortable using other things that I wasn't you know, familiar with. Normally, a um, year or so ago, if you asked me, there was always a jig tied on and it never came off, and there was always a frog tied on and it never came off. So those were two rods that really never changed for me all year round. And, you know, it stayed pretty much the same um, with some type of flipping bait or a topwater tied on at all times. But normally it was really instead of a flipping bait, uh, whether it be just, you know, a Texas rig, crawl or worm or something like that. It was really just a jig that was always tied on. So uh, this year we dabbled in expanding our horizons, our skill level, our comfort level. But our jigs, guys, um, one thing I will say is sometimes I prefer one with a bigger head. This is, again, a Guggen Squad jig. Um, I forgot what jig this is. Um, and it's got like a flat bottom. So really, you know, it might stand up there if you get it right in cover. And, you know, those legs can flap around back there. And you can, you know, hop it and it'll stand up. Looks great in the water. Another style jig, um, similar to that. It doesn't have, uh, it's got a flat bottom, but the nose is more uh, torpedo shaped, I guess I would say. It's got a more of a little bit of a point, different kind of a line tie on it as well. And it's a little bit smaller. So if you look at both of these jigs, guys, they're, um, one is a little bit smaller than the other one, uh, both in the jig head itself and in the body. Um, both, I, I did not trim the skirts on either or, and you can see the, you know, the difference on them. This one's got a full baby crawl on it, and this one has a um, uh, two segments missing of a regular size crawl. Sometimes the fish will like a bigger jig. Sometimes they'll like a smaller jig. And the funny part about this is, is this is a 3 8 ounce jig here. This is a half ounce tungsten jig. So, um, you know, you can see the difference in the what you get when you get tungsten. You know, you get a heavier weight in a smaller package compared to, you know, something else. Sometimes either or works. I've caught fish on both jigs uh, this year. This is the jig that primarily did all the damage this year. Uh, but I have caught fish on both of these jigs. Moving on, guys, to something that we've tried this year that we really have never really dabbled in, and that's um, in uh, you know some swim baits. Really, uh, here's a, a soft body paddle tail swim bait. This is um, the Weston Magic Minnow. Um, so we we threw this guy. Um, this guy actually came in a mystery tackle box. It's something I would never probably have picked up to be honest with you guys, because um, I'm, I'm not comfortable in throwing a soft body, you know, swim bait or paddle tail, really. So this year, again, we, we branched out. We've been throwing some paddle tails. We even rigged one on an underspin. Uh, we have this one, you know, that we've been throwing. But we also have, you know, a harder body style um, type swim bait. Uh, this jointed little guy, this is that baby bull shed uh, by Mike Buka. Again, uh, mystery tackle box uh, item that I would have never really um, gotten on my own or tried if I really didn't get it in that box. Uh, no success on this guy, but I do have plans for this time of the year to throw this, right? And again, like we're saying, everything here on the table, we're mimicking... Uh, bait or food forage for these fish again they're going to be aggressive they're going to be wanting to eat a big meal they're eating a lot they're trying to fatten up um, for the winter time guys so again we are imitating bait in our lakes ponds rivers reservoirs anything right we are imitating bait again here with these guys and trying to get them to commit and eat you know a, a bigger profile um, you know a bigger bait 
an easier meal for them essentially. So um, again, some type of soft body, swim bait, paddle tail, a jointed bait, any type of swim bait really this time of the year works great guys. That's another great tip for the fall. Another good tip guys is I always throw a spinner bait uh, of some type uh, during the fall. Again, we're imitating bait. So here is um, a live target bait ball um, that is imitating, you know, a small bait ball of fish. Fall time, you're going to have all that bait get together. They're going to form those big, big, big bait balls that those fish are going to follow and sit behind and sit on and just gorge themselves until they are fat and juicy and plump for the winter time. It's going to be an easy meal for them, you know, to track um, a big ball of bait. So a small bait ball in a spinner bait form, right? We got the one big um, bait here on the bottom with the two little guys and the one blade on, in the middle. This is a great bait. I'm going to throw this this fall on uh, my home lake here. Um, I'm sure I'll get some success with that because I do see a bunch of bait fish this time of the year um, around this size, smaller, bigger, um, in that particular body of water. So I know this is going to have some success. Along the same lines, guys, some type of a spinner bait is a great option this time of the year. It's a great search bait to see and find those aggressive fish and really cover some water here in the fall. And it does come through some cover um, quite well um, for, you know, having an exposed hook essentially, right, and all of that. Um, some of these treble hooked baits might have trouble coming through some of the cover, and we'll touch on that here in a little bit um, as far as cover and how thick the cover is. But again, guys, a spinner bait with some type of trailer on it is a great tool to use to find those aggressive fish, those active fish, and cover water to really figure out what's going on in your body of water. Again, another great bait to throw this time of the year when all of our bait is getting together. Those bait balls are forming. Um, they're being pushed up on the banks. You got riprap, anything, some type of a crankbait, guys. Now, this happens to be a little tiny square bill. Uh, I just kind of grabbed what was out here um, in front of me for this particular video. So I'm not necessarily going to throw this tiny little square bill. Um, this happens to be a Lunker Hunt uh, Shock 2.5. So this is just like a two and a half diving foot uh, crankbait. Not necessarily going to throw this particular one, but any type of crank um, from that medium to even deep. Really, you can throw anything from like the five to all the way to deep cranking, I would think, depending on your body of water and what you're fishing um, and depending on the bait and the forage that you uh, are seeing and that these fish could potentially be feeding on. But some type of crankbait, guys, is a great option this time of the year as well. All right, guys, and you know me, we can't have a video without talking about some type of top water baits, guys. Top water fishing in the fall, um, I think some folks discount it a little bit. They think, you know, it's a little bit slower, it's not as fun, but I've had some of the most insane blow up, some of the most insane fish um, come on some type of top water in the fall. It's a great time. Again, these fish are aggressive, they're feeding heavily. So I have a few options here on the table, guys. A uh, Whopper Plopper, again, is a great tool. I absolutely love the Whopper Plopper. This is my favorite color in that Whopper Plopper and size. So this is the uh, Whopper Plopper 110 in a, uh, the color is called Loon. Um, it's a great, great color. It's that black and white, um, really, really great in, bluebird skies and in cloudy conditions. I've had luck on this in the most crazy conditions that you would not think to throw um, a black a black and black and white type bait or colored bait. Another good color for this is um, I think it's called bone. Um, it's uh, a little bit of an off white color. That's a great color to have anything, you know, black, white, and some type of natural and you are golden. You don't need to buy every color under the spectrum. Uh, but again, a whopper plopper. This one has that little bit of a rattle in it. It's got those big, big old monster hooks on it. Um, great, great bait. I absolutely love this bait guys. Uh, something else that we got in our mystery tackle box 
was this pencil bait. Uh, so this is a uh, Yozuri uh, 3DB. Uh, this is a, a you know a walking style pencil bait. It looks really nice. I'm gonna tie this on. It's got great rattle in it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tie this bad boy on and see if we can have any luck this fall with this guy too. Um, I have some ideas for where I'm gonna throw this, and um, I think there are gonna be some aggressive smallies that absolutely demolish this thing um, come this uh, time of the year, come the fall. So. Um, Stay tuned for that video because I think I'm going to dedicate um, just a video to, you know, some top water fall action. Um, and this is definitely going to be one of those baits that I'm throwing, guys. Those baits, again, treble hook baits out in the open water or really, really light cover. Here's my heavy hitter for that heavy cover that we were talking about, guys. You know it. It's a frog. This happens to be that river to sea frog. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite frog. But I will tell you one thing, guys. Um, this frog normally, like I said, never comes off my frog rod. It stays on there. I only retie it as needed, and it stays on the rod. I never put a different frog on. This year, I've only used this frog once, maybe twice. And the Guggen frog has really found its place for me. It's my PB was caught on the Guggen frog. Um, so it's really found its place. And I can tell you, um, this is still my favorite frog for lighter cover or open water between cover, right? Not that heavy stuff. We're not talking about that heavy matted vegetation, that heavy pad um, of that fibrous stuff, you know, that rural heavy stuff. This guy is not going in there. Um, again, like I said, you can see he's got that keeled belly. Um, that is not ideal for going over heavy, heavy cover, that slop. What's going to happen is he's going to, that keel is going to catch. And like you can see here, he's going to go side to side. He's not going to stay straight. And when he's side to side like this, that walking motion is going to be different. Also, what's different when he's keeled to the side is if a fish comes and grabs it, they might only get one hook. So your hookup percentage might be a little bit difficult or go down because you're only getting one of those hooks inside the fish. So that's where that flatter bottom Guggen frog um, really shined through this year in that heavy stuff. Now with our uh, ponds and lakes getting a little less cover or that cover uh, growing out and dying and starting to die off, that cover is going to slowly move. This is where this guy's going to come through and shine for me here in the fall. I absolutely love throwing this guy around pads, not real thick pads, but pads that have sporadic pockets. It comes through that pretty well, and it's no issue there. Um, what I'm going to do this year is just trim off a little bit of the legs. I normally don't do any modifications to this frog, but um, I want to trim off just a little bit of these legs because I was having some short strikes on this guy in my area, um, at least as um as it goes for the legs the Guggen frog was getting hit pretty good um, and it had trimmed down legs so a frog guys that cover is is thick this time of the year it's probably the thickest it's going to be uh towards the end of summer and early fall because it's gonna you know it's, it's reached its peak it's gonna start dying off so you need something that comes through that cover well um so again your keel bellied frogs are going to come through it well, but not as good as something else if it's really thick cover, rural heavy matted grass or something like that, that slop. Sporadic vegetation and open pockets, a keel belly frog is great, and uh, that's what I typically use. So sticking on the topic of that heavy cover, that grass, right? Um, what else can you do with that grass other than a frog, other than some type of top water or, you, you know, you're having difficulty throwing a jig in there, you're having difficulty with your spinnerbait, even a paddle tail is coming through not too well. Um, one thing that I do is I always have, um, this year what I have is two sets of rods rigged up differently. One is just, like I said, standard Texas rig. Um, now I think I'm switching over to a heavier weight. I've been fishing really a quarter ounce weight most of the year. 
and it's a Wu Tungsten tungsten weight. Um, you guys have heard me praise Wu Tungsten and, and using a tungsten weight before, so I'm not gonna you know go into too much detail, but that's primarily what I'm throwing um, is a quarter ounce flipping weight from Wu Tungsten. I might change it up now uh, in my area. Some of the grass is really, really thick and really heavy this year, so I might change that up to a 3 8 ounce um, weight. So some type of Texas rig, guys, to flip in there, flip into that grass, open those open pockets in the grass, or, you know, if you're punching, that's the other setup we're going to talk about. But staying with the Texas rig, any type of bait is great, guys. I have a craw up on here. I have a baby trench, some type of creature bait, guys. Um, I have uh, stick bait, Sankos. I have, again, craws. I have... Um, rule slim down creature baits, guys. Um, these these X zone lure baits um, really really surprised me this year. Um, I won a giveaway um, with them, and I got a bunch a bunch of baits. And I have to say, the baits that I got are really interesting. Some of them I can't use right now. Um, there's some drop shot stuff that I got, and maybe some Ned stuff that I'm not gonna use until next year, probably. But um, the Cross, the Senkos, and these uh, Creature Flipping Baits, guys, real cool. Um, really like these colors, and I think this is where um, this bait would shine for me, is I'm thinking I'm gonna punch with this bait. That's the other option that you have, depending on the cover and the vegetation and what you're fishing, guys. Don't overlook a punching setup. Now, my punching setup is going to be, um, I don't have any hooks here with me, but it's going to be a regular uh, straight shank hook, regular worm style hook. And um, it's a heavy duty hook because obviously we're talking heavy cover, heavy line, heavy rod, uh, a heavy weight. We're going to be punching with a uh, one ounce tungsten weight. Uh, so make sure your hook is stout and steady and uh, up to the task. Um, so punch the grass, guys. Punch the grass, punch the pads, uh, punch reeds, cattails, punch uh, punch anything, really. You know what I mean? Um, anything that's... Uh, don't punch anything. Haha, <laughs> very funny. But um, punching is a technique that I am trying to learn, guys, uh, and get better at. Um, so it's something that I dabbled with early on in the season, just practicing. Uh, I have not found any area where I could really punch, like punch some heavy stuff. Uh, most of the stuff that I am able to punch through, as you guys have seen it on previous videos, is some of that matted grass that has openings. I can really flip in there with my Texas rig, quarter ounce weight, three eighths ounce weight, and I'll get through it and get down there. In one of my previous videos, guys, that is on the channel, uh, you can see I take that quarter ounce weight, punch it through little openings in uh, that matted vegetation that I've been talking about, and yank out a fish. Um, so, again, guys, when we're talking this punching setup or even this heavier flipping setup, um, again, a, a great plastic that's real, real um, compact, that doesn't have a lot going on. Um, so I'll take one of these guys out for you. So a bait that doesn't have too much going on, guys, on the body itself. So that way that bait can fall through and really um, get through that cover. So that's why I think this guy, um, you know, you can separate these. You don't have to separate them. Uh, but I think this guy, um, I really, really like him. Uh, my bandito bugs, when I would be punching through some heavy stuff, I'd rip off the appendages on the body. So this really looks like a bandito bug to me. Um, without its appendages. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different, and I'm not saying that Exxon copied Guggen or Guggen copied Exxon. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this bait reminds me of how I modify a Guggen bait to fit what I do. Um, I don't know if the action is the same, though, because it doesn't have those big um, flippers or that, that notch in the flipper or the appendage itself um, to give that action. But again, we're flipping heavy cover. We don't need that much action, guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna punch it through there and just shake this thing right in front of that fish on the bottom, work it in the middle, and then work it and bang it off the top, and then you're coming right back out. 
So you don't want a bait with a lot going on. You want that thing, that whole bait, that whole presentation to fall at one, as one unit. So you want your weight, your bait, your hook, all of that to go down as one unit. So you're pegged, um, you're pegging your, your uh, one ounce flipping weight or whatever you're using to flip through uh, or punch through. And you want that all to fall as one unit and stay compact and easy to eat for that fish. As far as these other plastics, guys, you can't overlook it's still a wacky rig Senko, um, a Texas rig craw or a creature bait. Um, those are all great options during the fall, guys. Really what I find success is flipping to cover, flipping the structure, flipping areas, flipping grass, um, flipping docks. That's all great, guys. Any type of, of your favorite plastic will work there. If the bite is tough, you can always... Um, go a little bit more finessey, like I said, with some type of wacky. So uh, I've been using the Exxon Lures uh, Senko and the Lunker Log from Dugan. Both are great options. Again, guys, slow it down. Wacky rig yourself uh, a Senko up. Really just let it soak. Soak the bait in that area. Really work it slow if those fish are finicky. But this time of the year, it, you'd be hard-pressed, unless it's a heavily pressured body of water, uh, to find a fish that's not going to want to eat or they're not active. Uh, like I said, they're trying to feed up for the winter time and they're just going to crush and smash anything um, that they think is going to be a good meal for them. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Again, um, I enjoy doing these little tabletop um, reviews, these little tabletop exercises, if you want to call them. Um, I like doing this, giving you guys my input on things that work for me or things that I like to throw that I find success with. Hopefully you guys found some value in it and enjoyed the video. Maybe you got an idea of how to do something um, or an idea of something to throw or something you want to try out and have more confidence in like I was doing most of the time this year, throwing different baits, throwing, uh, using different techniques, different line, um, all sorts of stuff guys. So. Really guys, I wanna thank you for joining me on today's episode. Like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it, found something useful out of it. If you did, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and click the bell so that you have all your notifications on all the upcoming videos, guys. Great, great stuff. Um, we've had our first collab for the channel with some other guys. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check that out. It was a collab and a challenge all at the same time. Um, so guys, definitely click the bell so you get all those notifications. Do me a favor, check the video description down below for the Instagram. Go ahead and give me a follow there as well if you haven't. Uh, the channel here is growing, Instagram is growing, so be sure to go and check the video description for the link to the Instagram. Give me a follow there. And as always, guys, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family either uh, on here, on Instagram, or if you're a superstar, join the family in both areas. That way you're covered on all this awesome fishing content coming to you and some other stuff that's coming that we're branching out into. Uh, so definitely guys, go ahead and do all of that. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys all the time. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.